Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you how I became a total sellout and made my first merch in collaboration with Elmo Labs. All jokes aside though, I'm actually pretty excited about this project. It's kind of like an Elmo Labs EFC, but a scatterbencher edition. In this video, I'll walk you through all of the changes that we made to the original EFC and all the different product features and functions. Oh, and for the occasion, I also visited Elmore in Taipei and I made a quick mini office tour for you to enjoy at the end of the video as well. The EFC SB or EFC Scatterbencher Edition is a customized version of the original Elmo Labs EasyFan controller I've used since Scatterbencher number 26. The base product functions and features are the same as the original EFC with here and there a tiny improvement. The most obvious difference is that this EFC version comes in the Scatterbencher color scheme, yellow, white and black. The EFC SB sports a white PCB with gold markings and prominently features a slightly modified Scatterbencher logo. The black power and fan connectors contrast against the yellow I2C and external temperature sensor connectors. The configuration button is also black and we changed it to a white LED with a yellow lens. The EFC SB also has a white 3D printed back cover to protect the soldering pins. The EFC SB also has two new features. TMAX LED and RPM Detect LED. TMAX LED is a function that warns the user in case the fan duty cycle reaches 100%. Suppose you map the fan curve to the water temperature. In that case, the water temperature has reached the maximum allowed value. The warning consists of a unique LED lighting pattern. RPM Detect LED is a function that warns the user in case the reported fan speed is too low, considering the set fan duty cycle. Practically, it may indicate no fan is present or that the fan is broken. The warning consists of also a unique LED lighting pattern. Lastly, we've expanded the accessories included in the package. The EFCSB comes with two yellow waterproof and two regular black flat tip thermistors. It also has a different I2C cable with a yellow, white and black color scheme. The first 50 units of the Elmo Labs Easy Fan Controller Scatterbencher Edition's initial production batch are available from the Elmo Labs web store. By purchasing an EFC SB, you support my work directly and any support is of course highly appreciated. I extensively covered the functions of the Elmo Labs EFC in a separate video on this channel and I pretty much explain it in every Scatterbencher overclocking guide that I make. But for those who haven't seen that video, and for those who have never watched any of my overclocking guides, here's a brief overview. Setting up the EFC is really simple. Just plug the fans into the fan headers and the power into the power connector. If you use an external temperature sensor, plug that into the temperature sensor header. Then use the button to navigate through the configuration menu. Short pressing the button once allows you to select between three menu items, fixed, low, and high. Fixed lets you set a fixed fan duty cycle setting, and low high enables you to configure a lower and upper ceiling for the temperature controlled fan curve. As you cycle through the menu items, the upper LED goes from the least to the most bright in three steps. This indicates which item is currently selected. Lowest brightness is fixed, medium brightness is low, and maximum brightness is high. Long pressing the button after selecting one of the three menu items allows you to choose one of the three options for each menu item. As you cycle through the options, the lower LED goes from the least to most bright, indicating which option is currently selected. After selecting the option, you do not have to do anything to apply the setting, just wait. When you set a low and high point, the EFC will complete the fan curve using a linear function. So in total, the EFC supports nine different fan curves mapped to a temperature sensor and three fixed fan curves. By default, the EFC SB maps the fan curve to the external temperature sensor TS1. The selected fan curve is low equals 25 and high equals 40. That means the fan will start to operate when the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and reach its maximum RPM when the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. The fan duty cycle is 30% at the low and 100% at the high point. The TMAX warning is enabled and the LED will light up if the external temperature is 40 degrees Celsius or higher. The RPM detect warning is also enabled to warn the user when the reported fan speed is less than 200 RPM if the fan duty cycle is 80% or higher. 
This is also how I use the EFC in pretty much all of my Scatterventure guides. Basically, it gives me a good indication of whether my cooling solution is saturated. Suppose the CPU is at TJ Maxx and the water temperature exceeds 40 degrees Celsius. In that case, the fans are at the maximum speed and thus the cooling solution is saturated. Improving the cooling solution by adding radiators or changing to more powerful fans would be the right action. Suppose the CPU is at TJ Maxx and the water temperature is below 40 degrees Celsius. In that case, it means the cooling solution is not saturated. Therefore, to improve the CPU temperature, you may enhance the thermal transfer of the CPU heat into the loop by changing the thermal paste, deleting or changing the water block. The Elma Labs EFCSB can also be connected to the Elma Labs EVC2 to extend its functionality. Essentially, you can use it to monitor and log the fan duty cycle, the fan speeds and the temperatures. Also, you can kind of use it to reconfigure the EFCSB and turn it from an easy fan controller into sort of an advanced fan controller. First, connect the EFC to the EVC2 using the I2C header to do all this. Then connect the EVC2 device to a USB port on your motherboard. Now download the EVC2 software from the Alma Labs website. Next, open the software and select the I2C bus connected to the EFC. In my case, that's I2C1. Click on Find Devices and the Elmo Labs EFC SB should be detected automatically. Navigate to the Elmo Labs EFC SB item in the menu. Now you have access to all the extended functionality of the EFC. The extended functionality includes switching between fixed mode and temperature control mode, enabling fan stop, changing the temperature source between the internal and external temperature sensor, adjusting the fixed fan duty from 0% to 100% in 0.625% intervals, adjusting the temperature control parameters, low and high temperatures from 10 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius in 0.1 degree Celsius interval, low and high fan duty cycle from 0% to 100% in 0.625% intervals, switching between different types of temperature sensors, changing the I2C address of the EFCSP, changing the RPM detect warning fan RPM speed, changing the RPM detect warning fan duty cycle, enabling and disabling the Tmax warning, storing a custom configuration which will be loaded when powering on, monitoring and logging of both internal and external temperatures, monitoring and logging each fan speed, and monitoring and logging of the fan duty cycle. To enable the data logging, Right click on any of the graphs that you would like to log the data of and select add to data logger. Navigate to the home menu and click data logger. Ensure that the data points you want to log are selected. Click file and select the folder where you want to save the data log. Then click start logging. The data logger creates a simple CSV file that you can import into, for example, Excel and make your charts. You can also use the data logger to include the monitoring information in hardware info. You follow the same steps to add the information to the data logger, but check the hardware info export option. Then click start logging. Now you can open hardware info and the EFCSB items should appear automatically. So uh, we got the Allen 2 corner over here, um, testing our Allen 2 container and hardware for uh, for fun and for uh, work as well. Uh, we got a test setup desk here and also a guest desk where Peter is currently set up, um, doing his uh, next video script, I presume. Um, Mingu, you already met. Hello. Coding. And uh, my desk is over here. Um, we've got a couple of projects we're working on here. I'm not sure if everything's okay for camera, um, but uh, well, probably no. EVC2, old one, 3D printed case. 
PM2 still in testing, testing stacking PCBs <coughs> for more inputs. Um, what else can we show here? Um, well, work in progress um, to be continued. EDD. Right. <coughs> Um, solder station over here, um, random boxes and equipment, um, just general testing and overclocking equipment. Um, storage area, we have a bit of a lab and uh, relaxation area. Um, coffee maker and uh, uh, retro pie. lab here. Some test equipment. Uh, it's a bit uh, scrappy. We're doing the best with the means we've got. We've got a couple of interesting items here. Um, and here we have a, a like a PC system set up and doing some measurements right now. So we're testing uh, Feeding external clocks into the system, so we have a device we're working on for that, so stay tuned. <laughs> um, yeah, it's still a work in progress, so still a lot of boxes, we're missing a couple of workbenches. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it for now. Alright, let's wrap this up. I was obviously joking at the beginning of the video when I framed this collaboration as me being a sellout. The truth is that Elmo Labs and I have been collaborating on many projects in the past, including the first 9GHz CPU overclock and Intel's 13900KS livestream. The truth is also that I really like his fan controllers. I've been using the Elmo Labs products in pretty much all of my scatter ventures over the past year and a half or so. so it kind of makes sense to make a Scatterbencher version. The good news is that if you want to support my channel or you want to support his business, you can very easily do it through the EFC SB. Not only do you get a warm, fuzzy feeling inside of your tummy for giving support of you know, your favorite creators, you also kind of get a neat product in return. All right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I will also put up a written version of this video up on my blog if you want to see all of the product features and some product pictures. And that's it. See you next time.